Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Michael Tradewinds RV Center here to congratulate you on your Coachman Freedom Express 301 BLDS Travel Trailer Toy Hauler. I'm going to walk you around you, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite and a few things to take into consideration when parking. On your campsite, be plenty of room for this awning. On your off campsite, of course, leave plenty of room for your slide coming in and out, preferably nothing hanging over top of it. But I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power cord is back behind your tire on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. And then your docking station for water would just be in front of the tires. So park accordingly so you can use the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, unhook our hitch. First thing we're going to do is level our unit. Your unit comes with a power tongue jack. Simply lift or lower. Do have a night docking light should you arrive at night. Once you got your unit level, next thing we're going to do is stabilize it. Now you get a hand crank for this and run these down. Now remember our unit's already level. We only want to run these down until we're stable. So to just run them down just until they're taut. You don't want to lift the unit in any way. Once we got our unit level and stable, we can go ahead and hook up our power and water. Again, your power cord back here behind your tires on your off camp side stores inside your unit. So if you just pull it out. At the end of that 30 amp service, should you need to plug into a 110, we have a 30 to 15 amp reducer. Comes your convenience pack. Got your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. And campsites. At campsites, we are going to hook up to your city water connection. First and foremost, your water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is going to reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 psi, protecting the lines in your unit. I always use this one hooking up at campsites because you don't know what the water pressure is. Hook that up, hook up your hose, but don't turn your hose on yet. There's one more step, and that's to come to your hot water heater and just make sure your drain plug's in. You have left it out last time you were camping. Get that back up in there nice and snug. Once that's in there tight, you can go ahead and turn your hose on. Now, if your hose has been on for a little bit, Go inside and open the slide if you need to, but I need you to get inside and open up all your water taps. Get a nice steady flow of water going through those, get all the air out of the lines, and you'll shut them off and you'll know at that point that your hot water heater is full, and then you can turn that on from indoors. Now let's say we're gonna go camping and we're not gonna use city water. We're gonna go boondocking. In that case, we're gonna fill up our fresh water tank. Your fresh water or potable water tanks could be on your campsite right below your uh, access to your fridge here simply fill this with a hose no need to use a water pressure regulator gravity fill that two ways to tell when it's full one there's an overflow valve right here or two on the insides where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks there's also a fresh water tank once that's full put your hose back on and then whenever you want to utilize that water you'll use your water pump don't turn on your water pump when hooked up to the city water that is already pressurized all right, we're hooked up with power and water. Let me walk you around the rest of the outside of the unit. Starting here on the campsite. So up top, we got a couple outdoor speakers. 
a vent for our microwave porch light access to the back of our fridge with a condensation leak here our potable water got a level on the unit already it's a flu for our furnace two things on that one make sure it's never blocked and two if you are running that be careful it does get hot set up for tv out here cable and 110s you have a uh, manual override for your slide right here sit it up in there put your hand crank in there and that'll bring your slide in we have a little coleman grill out here set up for that your big pass-through storage has some lighting the propane does come with a cover as a regulator just point it toward the tank you wish to be using left to you Lucy to open uh, spare tire down there and crank right there to get that down The other side of our pass-through storage. Again, your hot water heater. Got an outdoor shower, hot and cold water in there. There's drain let outlet down here. Here's your low point drains. To the right, that's your black and gray tanks. They call it liquid and body waste. Here's where you plug in your cable at the campsites. Again, your city water. Come on around the rear here, you do have a area you can store your sewage hose in. Again, our power. And this is a vent that you can push open from the inside of your garage. We'll open your garage door here shortly. See how that all works. And that about covers everything on the outside. Go ahead and take a look on the inside. Coming inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located at the entry doorway. Just above that is going to be your slide mechanisms and your awning. On your awning, you only want to run that out until you can see that silver bar. Uh, if you hold that button down, that will continue to run itself out and start running itself up backwards. So keep an eye on it when you run it out. Make sure you don't run it out further than you need to. Turn that back in here for you and close the door and continue our tour slam locks work best when gently slammed all right continuing in our unit here We've got our sink area self-explanatory microwave you have a light and a fan above your cooktop here these you would just turn the light and hit your spark when your gas is on these will light up in here your pilot light, you will light inside. Your Dometic fridge, turn that on, there's two settings. One is auto. Auto means when you're plugged in, you're running off electricity. As soon as you unplug, it switches to gas. Or lift up on this and it's strictly gas. If this light comes on, your gas is low. Generally, you want to keep it on auto. We'll talk about your garage here shortly. You got a couple of speakers up in the corners of your dinette. Lighting here, your sofa here. This table will remove from these legs. Lift it right up off here, remove these legs. Put this table down on this wooden lip all the way around. Put a couple back cushions on top. That'll give you another sleeping quarters. As far as your TV, when you arrive at the campsites, make sure you turn this green light on. That's a digital channel enhancer. And then run your digital channel scan. Below that's your sound system. Make that up one time. So, music indoors. Back in the garage or outdoors. So, a nice sound system, AM, FM. Uh, looks like maybe DVD player as well. Yep. So, a nice sound system. Coming back to our entry doorway, up above is our smoke alarm and our antenna. 
when you arrive at the campsite, crank it to the left to raise it. To the left, or to the right to raise it, to the left to bring it down. Also at our doorway is going to be our breaker box and fuses. A ton of 15s in there, a 40, a 5, a little variety. Highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. Before going into our bathroom, I'm going to finish here in the hallway. Here's our thermostat for our heat and AC. Over here is where we'll check the levels of our brand new battery. Fresh water tank, that's the one I said you can hold down to tell when your potable water is full. Black and gray tanks. Here's where you turn on your water pump if using that potable water. Here's where you turn on your water heater if hooked to gas and your water heater if hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Choose correctly. Down on the floor here, underneath the edge of your bed, is going to be your 12 volt carbon monoxide propane detector. Now the reason I mention that's 12 volts, always running off your battery. So if you are out boondocking, dry camping somewhere, and you're going to be gone for the day, disconnect one of your battery posts to keep this from running your battery down. You have a bathroom in here. Shower. You do have a hand crank open power exhaust vent up there. Lighting for that. Exhaust runs through here. Tub and shower. Check out our garage. Now it looks like you do have a screen uh, window that they're going to put up for you during prep shooting this video kind of early here over here is our controls Let's bring our bed down so as you see both the top and bottom bunks are coming down make sure that when you use these for seating or for sleeping that you bring down all your support legs silver button to push here there we go get them down you need to run this down now your top bunk will stop at a certain point and as our bottom bunk comes down we can just roll the backs forward and that'll give you the back on these. Oh, we have to put our support legs back down in order to roll these up. Get that up in there. That needs a roll. Just have to roll them back like so. Continue to bring them down. Here's the vent I talked about. Push that open for a little air in here. Now when we bring these bunks up, see our table. We have a table and ladder underneath here. Table. Oh, there's a ladder in the back. So once we bring these up. We'll bring them up all the way we'll take these cotter pins place them through here and that's going to hold our top bunk up so when we bring our bottom down our top bunk will stay up so you put all four of them in all once our bunk is up and that will leave them in all of them are right there on the wall for you let's bring our ramp down all right now opening our deck up you'll keep these locked of course so we swing these to the outside, pull back, lift up, swing to the outside. Now this spring actually makes it easy for one person to go ahead and bring these down. It's that simple. Raise your bed and everything up, bring your toys in. Again, that spring makes it also easy to lift back up. Should you keep these locked? That about covers everything on the unit. Let's act like we're getting ready to close the unit up and leave the campsite. So I went through 
and shut off all of my lights. Now I'm going to say doors and drawers. Make sure all doors and drawers are closed. Nothing's going to impede your slide from coming in. Batten down the hatches. Come to our control panel. Oops, it's down here. And hit in on our slide. And hopefully by the time you get this video, we'll have that all lubed up for you and won't be as squeaky when you bring your slide in. Once our slide's all the way in, we'll exit our unit. Now these steps, the biggest thing you want to remember, bringing them up or down, is to make sure your exterior door is all the way open or this could catch on it you also have adjustable feet by moving that cotter pin lock your door in here now before you leave the dump station make sure you lock and deadbolt your door and lift and turn this handle now, i say that in case you want to go in there and check your tanks while you're dumping now if we are at boondocking dry camping we're gonna bring up our stabilizing jacks and dump our fresh water tank everywhere else we're gonna unhook our water our cable our power bring up our stabilizing jacks and head on up to the dump station at the dump station park accordingly your dump is gonna be in between your tires in the front on your driver's side of your tow vehicle and you had a 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack hook that hose up body waist is to the left the handle is not black but we know it's going to be your thicker one pull that handle once it sounds like that's no longer draining go inside look and make sure that it's no longer draining once it has go ahead and close that black handle and pull our liquid waste handle that's going to be your one on your right. There's a smaller hose. Once that's done, go ahead and pull that, close that gray up. Get up underneath here and open up your low point drains. When number done, if you're done for the season, come to your hot water heater. Lift up on this pressure release valve. And that's going to dump the remainder of your hot water out. When that's done, close that and then you can pour your drain plug for your residual hot water again we thank you so much for your purchase hope you enjoy this freedom express for many years to come happy camping